Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, the beautiful, the effervescent Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk Sister Wives Season 19, Episode 5. You already know. Girl. We're here to go in. Oh, we're going to go off. Now, before we do, we have to issue you a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically in correct podcast we say a lot of bad words Mm -hmm. we have stupid opinions and we scream them from the dumpster baby Uh and so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster but if you're down to party and get into some polygamous and into some spiritual release Uh. welcome to this (laughs) dumpster and if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We just started our coverage of Smothered on there oh, and God. that show is insane. Oh, the bathwater. These moms. My God. The matching outfits. I can't not dry heave when I, I mean, watch that show. It's, it's nuts. Um, yes, but join us on Patreon. We're having a lot of fun over yeah. there. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment and share. Just copy the link. That's Just, it. You don't even have to send it to anybody. Just, Just hit copy share, it. copy the link, and that helps us. Yeah. And also don't forget to subscribe Please. because so many of you who watch, you're not even subscribed to us. And That's it would really rude. help us if you did all of those things. And maybe we could attract some other fat raccoons yeah. into the dumpster here with us. That'd be great. Thank you in advance. Thank you. All right, before we get into all the stuff, mm-hmm. I understand that we have a raccoon we do. who has called in via SpeakPipe. Yeah. Now, by the way, if you want to call us and sound off on your opinions about sister wives or whatever mm. all you have to do is call us at speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe uh-huh. you have 90 seconds to just go off queen it's free it is free and we love to hear your opinion we do so who called we have a raccoon named allison and she's okay. got a comment about cody brown cody okay. motherfucking brown all right let's get into it hi so this is allison from gilbert arizona I feel so dumb asking this question because I know this show and Cody Brown isn't built on logic, but isn't it crazy that the initial beginning of the show started out with Cody saying that love should be multiplied, not divided, and they're just now allowing him to say he doesn't love his wives, any of his wives besides Robin? without forcing him to explain it more. It just feels crazy to me, but I still can't stop watching. <laughs> love you guys and love listening. Thank you, Allison. Thank we really you. appreciate you calling in and jumping in the dumpster with us. Well, what did you think? I mean, I think it's ironic that he started the show on that tagline, but I don't think the producers care to mm. like call him out on it because he's already putting his foot in his ass in his mm. mouth right. at every single turn. And it just goes to show that Cody has been lying this entire time. Mm -hmm. And that's why he doesn't take any accountability because he doesn't want to be seen as a liar, as a man who abandoned his wives and his children. He doesn't want to be seen by as this because it's Cody Brown. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's God's gift to women. Right. And to all of us. I guess. I mean, he is necessarily contradicting himself every week. Mm Mm-hmm contradicting what he said for multiple seasons over many many years yeah but i agree with allison like i kind of wish production would do something yeah like how awesome how rad would it be if production just stopped him mid-sentence when he's going crazy about how he never loved his wife because he's been doing it for seasons you could come prepared to these couch interstitials and like just show him evidence of what he said about his wives before right even in this episode Beatrice he talks about never loving his wives before and then he talks about how he loved his wives during COVID and wanted to take care of everybody right in one episode he's contradicting himself would it kill a producer to just say well wait a minute Cody because didn't you say x y and z and have him answer for that and that's where so much of the frustration comes from for a lot of us is that there's no actual accountability cody is just allowed to lie straight to our faces and then he has his puppet robin with her fake tears and her diesel jeans (laughs) 
just <laughs> lying. Like we don't have years upon years of recorded film. Yeah. Of recorded footage of all the shit you said. Like we know you're lying. Oh, yeah. And you're sitting here wasting my time lying more. It's infuriating, Allison. It it's is. It's infuriating and it's insane. And I feel like I'm crazy. Oh, I do too. Allison. But I am totally with Allison that I'm still going to watch. Oh, me too. <laughs> it's like too. none of this stops me from watching. Right. You know, we're still going to get the stupid tell nothings with Sukiana. Right. Gosh. Probably at the God end bl- of this. Bless her heart. Oh, my God. No, I hate <laughs> Sukiana. I don't hate Sukiyana, but she's uh, just a wet noodle. Seriously. And an impotent journalist. For real. And we're gonna we're probably gonna have her at the end of this season. Mm-hmm. And but we're still gonna watch every single fucking episode. Yeah, well if they do the look backs and the talk backs, I actually liked those. I did too, yeah. A bit more than the, the toothless Sukiyana <laughs> episodes. But yeah, yeah, like nothing is going to change because no. why would production need to change anything? We're all in the dumpster, exactly. watching, rabid for the content. And yeah. it's so fucking half-assed, Beatrice. Oh, I know. They are filming themselves. They're setting their own fucking tripods up with their iPhones. Mm-hmm. Or Robin Brown in the bathroom. And her claws. Her fucking phone. <laughs> was she high? I don't know. On like some Xanax or something. Something going on. I was wondering. I played girl. it back. I'm like, oh, you seem a little altered, She's kind of slurring her words. Like, yeah. They're all self-filming. There's no camera no. crews. There's no professionalism <laughs> at all here. Like not, they're, they're not expending any money to produce this show. Yeah. And we're all watching. Like of it's course. Going out of style. Well, and that's the thing. Like we're all watching. So, right, so why, why bother? They, yeah. 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 I don't but, know what to tell. Just like Allison, we'll yeah. still be here. But, of course. But people are getting so angry. Oh, yeah. I was up on the Reddit. You were? Oh, <laughs> always. Somebody just venting about how crazy this is like week after week we've got to sit here and listen to this horse shit and how enraged she was and people are like look if you're watching a reality tv show yeah and you find yourself with elevated blood pressure sorry, <laughs> your jugular <laughs> protruding out of the side of your neck like having an actual activated emotional response to fucking Cody Brown. Yeah. Like step away from the television. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah. Have a glass of wine. Chill. Just hang out with your friends. Like it's, it's just TV. not that deep. Right. Exactly. But people get so charged up. Yeah. Even on Plathville, on all these shows. Oh, yeah. People get fucking charged up. They do get charged <laughs> up. Yes, they do, Beatrice. They do. And I'm just like, it's going to be okay every day. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but I do get angry, so I'm just being a complete hypocrite. Yeah. Okay, let's get into some gossip because there yes. are a couple of items that I want to cover with you. Yes. First and foremost, I follow the lovely Nikki Haverstock here on YouTube. I think she's got a TikTok. Yeah. They recap Sister Wives every week, her and her husband, who seems like he's in a hostage situation. <laughs> he just sits there rolling his eyes and making snide co- comments about Cody Brown and it's Love fantastic. It. But anyway, I watched a video from Nikki Haverstock a couple of days ago in which she divulged mm. that one of her viewers who happens to be a realtor or whatever Ooh. sent her some documentation mm. about the fact that <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> apparently Cody and Robin have taken multiple loans, whether they're HELOC loans or equity loans, whatever kind of loans out <gasps> against the McMansion. Not just one Ooh. loan, because we've been talking for years, haven't we, Beatrice? Yes. But how the rumor was that Janelle asked for her money back, the money that she put into the McMansion, mm-hmm. and they took out some sort of an equity loan to pay her back. That was the rumor for a couple of years. Well, apparently it's not just one loan. It is multiple loans. And Nikki says, in fact, so many loans that they may owe more on the house than they are going to be able to sell it for. Stop. I it's, won't stop. Oh my god! Can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> can't stop. That is so mm, delicious. Delicious. So delicious. I shouldn't like revel. No, in there. don't do that. But I, I love it. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I love it. That is so great. They live like tacky kings. Like, they live like <laughs> tacky, tacky new money, tacky yes. kings and queens, like with all their terrible art. Oh my god! Spending their money on all this bullshit but they're living way beyond their means oh my god and then he has the balls the saggy old man balls yeah to say on this episode that he wants to get a bigger house i know for mckelty and tony to live on. they were actually looking at a bigger house Stop. in 2022 you can't even afford the one you have 
I think in 2022, they hadn't been hit energetically yet with the realization like, oh, fuck, Janelle's gone, Mary's Um. gone, Christine's gone, and all that money is gone. They haven't really felt it yet. I think Year of Our Lord 2024, they are in the middle of feeling it. Oh, my God. They could like foreclose on their house. (laughs) Like, how could they make the payments if they have all those loans, right? Like... Well, I mean, maybe they're making enough from TLC, which is their only job. Maybe they can make the nut of the mortgage. But now that Christine has filed a lawsuit for four years of back child support. Like, they can't afford that. He's going to probably be at least $100,000 for back child support, much less the next six years of her life or more. Cody's going to have to record a lot of cameos. Panic at the disco, baby. (laughs) Panic at the disco. I love to see it. Karma really is a bitch. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have stole all the money. You shouldn't have siphoned the money as a fiduciary of the LLC into this bad art and Mm -hmm. into all of Robin's jewelry and your rings and Rolexes. Yep. Jesus Christ, there, there needs to be a reckoning. Yeah, oh, for sure. But imagine, I mean, I can see how somebody would do that if they had the money. Mm. But taking loans out that's wild. on your house. You don't have the money in then. order to buy that artwork? No, that's crazy. I mean, I'm living in this house, Beatrice, <laughs> in Texas. I know. This Barnaby Jones house. It is not so that bad. So I do not have to, first of all, get a new mortgage because yeah. my my interest rate here, honey, is like one point nine percent. I mean yeah. listen, and I mean I don't want to live beyond my means. Yeah, of course. I'm comfortable. Like, I don't want to, like, buy this big fucking house, become house poor, and then put myself in a situation. Right. Like, he's debt financing his ugly stallion ring. I know. And all of his bullshit. That is so crazy. But I, you know what? Again, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) This is what you get. Yeah. He's never been good with money. No. She's not good with money. Never. Even though she says she's a great budgeter okay I'm such a good budgeter now i've changed a lot since the Whatever. victoria's secret bill. that's what they prioritized their money then on mm-hmm. was all the loans on their house yeah and that's why they wanted to sell it for 1.65 million uh-huh girl it didn't sell though well they can't now well now they can't but like it also didn't get any offers of course not why would you pay 1.65 million i mean i Sorry, think ben. they thought somebody was gonna pay that amount of money for that broken down mcmansion no it's Mm-mm. all that purple and everything. Oh, so much purple. Moving on to the next bit of hot gossip. Give it to me. So we were talking last week about how some people on the internet, and let's be real, it was Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about that scene last week in the snow where they were standing in the shoveled out portion, which is a mark for the cameras, mm-hmm. and having their spontaneous argument. Yeah, sure. In which Robin is trying to convince Cody to just talk to your kids. Camp out on their doors. Your camp. kids. Your kids. So we had to endure that. Yeah. And of course, we have raccoons with monocles out here and they were so wondering many. when that was actually filmed because of course it felt so rehearsed yeah of it course. felt so scripted yeah and people were wondering whether it was actually filmed after garrison passed oh that would be terrible and which i said that would be completely psychopathic mm-hmm. and diabolical if they came up with that kind of a scheme within a week or two of garrison's passing and i thought and i said last week that I didn't think that was the case. Mm-hmm. It felt like it was probably proximate to Logan's wedding because Cody was all triggered about Maddie scuttling the children away and having to sit in a corner in the venue. So that Whatever. made more sense to me. Mm-hmm. But apparently I was wrong because guess what? What? Some raccoons on the Reddit actually reached out to the company that designed and manufactured <laughs> Cody's jacket. Stop. Apparently, the brand is Cool, K-U-H-L. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Who cares? And one raccoon in particular reached out to Cool and asked about that particular jacket. And guess what? Cool responded. Oh, my God. Do you want to hear what the response is? Okay, hold on. Okay, so the Redditor that reached out is all the parents suck. (laughs) In Sister Wives, it's true. Uh, All of the parents suck. Definitely. The name of this post is I contacted Cool about Cody's jacket. And this was their reply. Thanks for reaching out. 
We're unaware of the situation with the show, but we appreciate the context as to why we've received so many random inquiries about when the color Deep Pond slash Dark Khaki was released in different cool jackets. Oh my God. This information helps us provide an informed response. Deep Pond Dark Khaki was a seasonal colorway in multiple jackets created for our fall of 2023 <gasps> line. The jacket in the photo you provided is the Stretch Voyager jacket. The Stretch Voyager jacket in Deep Pond slash Dark khaki could have been purchased in august of 2023 or later from our website it's also possible the jacket could have been purchased from one of our authorized retailers sometime starting in june of 2023 the jacket was not available to the public in 2022 oh my god so they're lying liars who lie yes yeah yeah wow that scene was staged that scene did not happen at the very least it did not happen proximate to logan's wedding it didn't happen a month later a couple of weeks later cody wasn't so activated and upset about the wedding it happened most likely in the fall slash winter of 2023 because he couldn't have got the jacket earlier than june 2023 Mm. so in the winter either like November, December, Mm -hmm. or January, February of 2023, 2024. Wow. Or, and it is a possibility, it could have been filmed after Garrison's passing. Now, again, I just have to say, tell me what you all think. But I, I mean, they're terrible people. I would even say Cody's a despicable person. But I just can't imagine a parent who would be in the headspace of like conniving and manipulating to that level just a week or two after their son's like i can't i can't picture it and feel my way into that but it is possible what do you think that would be so fucking evil if they did that after his like i mean that is just a whole new level especially like on robin's side too like i mean she's doing this to save both their reputations. But mainly hers. You th- yeah, you think so she I was do. the one that created this scene, you think? Yes. I mean, mm. she wants us to see her begging Cody to reach out to his children. Because let's say it was filmed in winter of 2023. This means that they have seen the show. They've seen the backlash. Yeah. They've felt the backlash. And they are in some sort of damage control they're in a tailspin. They're trying to recover their image. I could see that. Yeah, and I could see Robin being really concerned about what people are thinking of about her. Of course. And so needing to sort of curate this image of her as caring about those kids after she's demonstrated, without a doubt, yeah. that she don't give a shit. <gasps> wow, these people. Yeah. Like, you think if you're going to lie this much, like, why would why? you wear a shirt? Why would you wear a limited edition or like a new he didn't seasonal even think color. about it he like, should have though what an idiot he should have known that we were out here thinking like that about this show he sh- he should have known by then i mean that's wild to me mm-hmm. like you're wearing a brand new jacket that just came out at the, like probably at the time that mm-hmm. they're filming that like mm-hmm. but beatrice <sighs> wouldn't it be easier to just say i was wrong yeah wouldn't it be easier to just have some sort of an epiphany on the couch robin right where you say like i probably should have made sure that he went and visited his other kids during covid i was actually really scared you know it was a terrible time for all of us i didn't know what was going to happen but i should have made that a priority i didn't and i was wrong wouldn't that have been easier than staging this fucked up scene and pretending you care yeah when you do not care yeah to normal people would be easier to take accountability like that and just suck it up Mm -hmm. swallow your pride and be like yeah i fucked up i fucked up i'm not a perfect person but i think that like gabe is right in this episode when he's saying that they wanted to do this all along covid was just the excuse yes so that's why they're lying that's why they're trying to cover up their bullshit because it's true right it was like oh god this works in our favor yeah this is actually gonna help this is to maneuver me into robin's home and i'm never gonna have to leave again never have to see my family ever again because i don't give a shit and we all know it and even worse your kids know it yeah and they can see it and they can feel that yeah maybe he's too embarrassed to admit that he's that much of a piece of shit that's pathetic yes girl 
Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about, and we won't go all the way into it, but apparently within the last week, McKelty, vis-a-vis her Patreon, Mm -hmm. made a statement in which she said that it is incumbent upon her father, Cody Brown, as the parent, to reach out to the children that are hurt to make amends, that he should be the one making the phone calls, he should be the one showing up on their doorstep, because he's the goddamn parent. And as a parent, I know that to be true. Of course. As a child, you know that to be true. Yep. The only one who doesn't know that to be true is Cody. Mm -hmm. I think what's significant about this is that this is coming from McKelty. Yes. I'm actually glad that she said it. I know we don't really like McKelty. I know she's coming wing because she is. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that this child who has been like semi-neutral, semi like also on Cody and Robin's side, like trying to see the good in them, she's finally realizing... There's no good in them. Yeah, there's nothing there. (laughs) They suck ass. Mm -hmm. And so obviously something must have happened, like something so bad at Garrison's funeral or memorial that Robin did that just set McKelty over the edge where she's like, you guys suck. Mm -hmm. I'm done trying to cover for you guys, trying to give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Take accountability or fuck off. Right. Another thing she said is that like 95% of the effort was all one-sided. It was her mm. reaching out. It was her wanting to see them. Apparently, mm. they never let the littles or the kids come over to Tony and McKelty's house. Like they just weren't really interested despite what we're seeing in the episode this week with Cody so excited to see Ace and Archer. Like the reality is the reason Avalon doesn't want to hug you is because she doesn't know you, my guy. She probably Mm. hasn't seen you since she was born, if then. Right. So he's just, he doesn't make any effort. She also, I think, talked about Maddie. um, Mm -hmm. And tell me, do you know what it was? It was about like, Maddie being upset by what Cody was saying about right. her because he was just dragging her and calling her a gossip and just being really mean. Right. And Maddie's pissed off. And she has every right to be. Mm-hmm. And there's probably not going to be any reconciliation. I don't know if no. McKelty said that, but I know Janelle said that in this episode. Essentially, so, yeah. Looks like McKelty's seeing the light. And I'm like, okay, but it wasn't that hard to see the light two years ago. Like yeah. the entire family, all of your siblings were seeing that light. The audience was so like, what kept you involved one thing nikki haverstock said was that at the time we're talking about the placenta which we're gonna get to yeah we will and we're we're looking at this visit from cody and robin we're talking about like december 2022 Mm. and tony and mckelty started their patreon january of 2023 oh so that might have been the beginning of some of the wobbles in this relationship starting to see it yeah and I mean, like, in McKelty's defense, that's her dad. Like, she doesn't want to. I've said this before. Like, she doesn't want to admit that, oh, my father abandoned everybody. Mm-hmm. And, like, she was really close with Robin, too. Like, I still really love Robin. I still want to have a relationship with her. Like, we talked about it last week. Like, it was cool that Robin stayed with her mm-hmm. while she had the babies. And people on Reddit were saying that Robin was there for, like, two weeks. Yeah. That's what people are assuming. So, I mean, that's good yeah shows robin's character but it could also be manipulative sure it could also be pretty toxic and it is and so i'm glad that mckelty's finally like realizing mm-hmm. what am i doing here well, why maybe am I she no longer needs her dad's money because maybe she's got her too. patreon which makes them a lot of money yeah so she doesn't need to be subsidized by cody and robin and maybe right. they're no longer making an effort because she's on patreon talking about them even though she's She's pretty tame when she's she talks very careful. about, yeah, Cody and Robin. And maybe they don't like it. I don't know. Well, Crimey River. Yeah. We like it. I like and it a I lot. And I wish more people would do this. Yes. I want to hear more from Gabe, mm-hmm. Enlightened Gabe. Oh, my God. I love him. Yes. We loved that conversation. I would love to hear from more of the kids. And maybe yes. at some point we will. I hope so. Okay. So that was long ass. Sorry. We didn't get right into the episode. Um, but I had to go over all of that. And of course, we had to hear from the lovely Allison. Thank you, Allison. All right. Now let's get into the episode again. Season 19, episode five entitled The Year of Release. Oh. <laughs> Spiritual Sweet release. Nice. Okay. So there was like five main sections. It was sure. Cody and Robin visiting McKelty, Christine talking about David. I don't care. <laughs> Janelle and Gabe. Mary granting getting granted the mm-hmm. release. And then Christmas Eve with Robin high on something, <laughs> crying in her closet. Zanny tears. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve Zanny tears. Yeah. yeah. I wish I had some Zanny tears. I know. <laughs> Goddamn. 
<laughs> so we start with Cody and Robin making their obligatory visitation to McKelty and Tony to show us all that they're real people that right. care, but only selectively care about the people that are loyal to them. Right. AKA McKelty and Tony. Right. And you get that scene with Cody in the car acting like he's so excited to see mm. his grandbabies. I don't believe it. This is just an appearance. And again, they are on a campaign to rehab their image. And it was just really awkward. Oh, yeah. And very strange when they arrived. Oh, yeah. And I was just thinking about Maddie. I'm like, if I was Maddie and Mm. I was watching that and you haven't seen my kids, any of them since they were born, I'd be like, fuck you. You're so eager to go and visit McKelty and her twins just because she's nice to you. She's trying to be neutral because Mm -hmm. you're her dad and she loves you, but you won't come and visit me? Right. Fuck you. And you have Robin on the couch talking about the relationship with McKelty because, you know, Cody's saying that she's special Mm -hmm. and Robin is saying, well, she sees both sides and she knows the truth. Mm -hmm. Implying the subtext, of course, is and because she chooses to be with us and to have some sort of an allegiance to us, then the truth means that we're not bad people. We're actually Uh great parents and she can see that whereas nobody else can. Yikes. Yeah. That's toxic AF. Uh Uh-huh. It's really terrible yes, to see. And then Cody and Robin are like kissing the babies on their mouths. And it's really With weird. With all their cold sores and everything. It's gross. Not that they had active cold sores, but like but we all know you have a history. We've seen them. Cold sores in your family. Like don't kiss my baby. Yeah, don't do that. Nope. Gross. And then we talk about eating placentas. We do. And this gives me like my Madeline Kahn flames. <laughs> flames like i get i get rage with mckelty because because the the context here is that around this time mckelty was talking about postpartum depression and she was likening postpartum she was doing this like on her patreon and she was making statements to the public about how postpartum depression is actually because the mother feels a sense of jealousy because the child is getting the attention now like the most ridiculous take possible for sure and so she's building on that which mm-hmm. she said publicly and now she's talking about how eating your placenta is actually something you can do to ward off postpartum depression now i haven't seen any um peer-reviewed studies to yeah. that effect i don't know the science on that but i am dubious mm-hmm. i don't really believe it and i hate her propensity to say irresponsible bullshit like that i agree and robin also parrots it too being oh, like, yeah. oh yeah i ate my placenta too oh by the way i was the first <laughs> i was the first to eat the placenta the number one yeah she's got to be the first yeah i liked how mary was like ew that's Study fucking disgusting enough. beatrice what beatrice i'm gonna eat my placenta <laughs> oh god are you i don't know i thought about it it's supposed to be good for you because stem cells and stuff i don't know okay but, but then beatrice, i'm like i'm gonna have to see it and it looks beatrice gross. we had to see it that's where i was I going know, with yeah it. she had a picture i know of the placenta out of which she took a bite with that big ass mouth of hers raw raw and then she put that shit in a smoothie yeah that's nasty as fuck I, that's gross i cannot and i don't need it i no. don't want it on my mm-hmm. television mm-hmm. nobody needs to see that i mean you could talk about it and i'm dry heaving <laughs> but then you're gonna show a picture of yeah. the partially eaten placenta and you have lost me honey with no warning you have either. lost me to the wind my I'm dry God heaving. damn i was in the middle of my lunch watching were that. you really i was in the middle <laughs> of my eggs and bagel oh no See, I've got a strong stomach. I was like, uh, whatever. But I, I don't know. I think it's like a trend with like millennials and Gen Z to be kind of crunchy like that. To be like, yeah, like eating your placenta is like so healthy and amazing. It's so good for you. Like you should do it. But everyone's like, that's nasty. Just like the same thing with like home births and unnatural. Like, and it's breastfeeding a in a circle of Mormon ladies. Singing kumbaya and yeah, <laughs> sharing babies. Well, my husband was walking through the living room at the time that the placenta was being shown on the television. <laughs> and he was listening to what McKelty was talking about, like mm-hmm. how the, mas- the placenta provides nutrition and this and that. And he's like, no, it doesn't. It's literally just a sac. What provides nutrition is the umbilical cord. Yeah. That's what provides. So he's just like talking about... <laughs> like how erroneous she is just in the fucking shit that she's saying. No, I'm not saying that there's not value to eating like a cow's liver and or a placenta. I get it. There's iron, there's shit in there. Yeah. But like, 
Why are we doing it? Why are we doing this? I didn't sign up to the Sister Wives franchise so I could hear McKelty Padrone and Too Many Tacos Tony For real. talking about her placenta. Bitch. I mean. Please. It was a long segment. Like the whole placenta thing and then the breastfeeding thing. I'm like, can we just get to like Not, the family stuff yeah, like, i don't i don't care yeah nobody cares let's get to gabe yeah for real let's that's get to the best gabe yeah do we want to talk about the breastfeeding thing i mean okay i mean i don't care well they talked about how it is a rumor that in polygamist cults and mormonism like the women sit around in a circle and pass the baby around um i guess mckelty likes to tease christine about that yeah and christine's like we never did that absolutely not and janelle's like no we never did that and then mary's like i, I breastfed that. i breastfed maddie right and then we have janelle being like i never breastfed any of the other kids because i didn't have enough milk i'm like so then why are we like acting like that didn't happen with mary helping out with Matt. like there's nothing wrong with it well i think that they were differentiating between yeah mary breastfed maddie because she had failure to thrive versus like sitting around in a mormon witch circle right. a coven circle <laughs> and passing a baby around and having that baby breastfeed uh, off of random boobs yeah like, like midsummer. that rumor is maybe not true but Still, like, yeah, we do pass around a baby if the baby needs milk. And don't we have like breast milk banks now? Yeah, like, I if think you're so. a mom and your milk's not coming in or whatever, you yeah. can go to the breast milk bank and you can get some breast milk. Yeah, this happened like a few years ago across the country when we had a breast milk shortage right. and people were like selling breast milk and stuff mm -hmm. and helping women get it because or it was like not a breast milk shortage, <laughs> it was a formula shortage. Yeah, yeah my yeah. bad. Yeah, and then people were like trying to help out with all that stuff. So yeah. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. No, I mean, wet nurses, I yeah. Mean, through Throughout time immemorial have always been a thing like, like it's something that happens it's not strange it's fine like we're acting like it's weird but whatever and we have christine talking about dating david and i'm a snoring, and I'm a snoring. <laughs> I'm like i literally don't care you're married one year now you've you're been married, married for a year i don't need to see your second date oh where we're God. pretending you had to break it to David Woolley that you're a polygamist as if his daughter didn't look you up on the internet and know exactly who you were as if David Woolley hasn't already admitted to watching a few episodes of Sister Wife. Yeah. Why are we pretending that David is like, oh, of course. Yeah. All right. It's fine. You were polygamist. Like yeah, my, whatever. my sisters are in polygamy. Christine, you knew that. Yeah. You heard the name Wooly and you knew exactly who they were. Of course. Oh, I just hate how they treat us like we're so stupid. I, they really think we're dumb, but we watch it anyway. And then she's talking about how she's going to ask him in the next date if he's sexually attracted to her. And I don't, I also don't care about that. Well, I thought that was the only poignant thing in that section because there is a deep wound that exists because Cody has said mm -hmm. that he was not attracted to her. And in fact, when she ate them nachos, honey, yeah, from the gas disgusted. station, he was repulsed and disgusted by her. Yeah. And so she's kind of worn this terrible weight or this anvil of how she's not an attractive woman. So I can see how that would be very important for her to establish with David. I get it. And it makes me feel bad for her. Yeah. Because Cody's such a fuckwit. Yeah, true. And he's not attractive. Yeah. And he's an asshole. Yeah. Well, and he hurt her as a woman. Can't forget about his six pack abs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no, I mean, I get it. It's just like, oh, yeah. I, I just, I'm like, I'm finding myself annoyed by the scenes where we're talking about dating David as if we hadn't seen the wedding special. And then we're going to have more of that next episode when Christine's like, yeah, I want to tell all my kids that I love David. It's like, I don't care. I don't care either. Plus, you're self filming. You're filming this in yeah. your car. There is no camera crew, there it's is very filler. little effort. And so let's move on. Yep. And we do move on to Janelle and Gabe. Yes. Which I love this. I Why, want what did more you love? of it. I just, I love Gabe. I think he's like so based. He's so wise for his age. He's just talking very candidly. It's because he's had therapy. Yes. It's great. I wish more kids were like this. I wish more of them f felt the need to speak out about their father. I don't know why they don't. But I loved it. I love the conversation between him and mm -hmm. Janelle. It starts off with them cooking eggs and they're talking shit about how Cody was very peculiar about his eating habits, specifically with eggs. Mm -hmm. We talked about that even in season one where he only liked pepper or some weird shit with his eggs. Right. And then we kind of get into the conversation about like how Cody changed 
during COVID. Mm -hmm. Like that was the catalyst Mm -hmm. for everything. There was so much that was said, and I fear that I'm going to miss a lot of it. Uh, I think the main thing I think that hit with me was how Gabe said that he had an intentional conversation with Cody. Like he sat that man down and he told him, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he told him, you do realize, bub, (laughs) that you are the reason that this family has fallen apart. And until you take accountability, until you do right by me. This is going to continue to be in a state of brokenness until you accept responsibility for what you have done, which is when Cody then turned around and said, you're just like your mama. Uh, You're disloyal, just like Janelle. Wild. I mean, as a parent, Mm -hmm. if my daughter sat me down in an intentional way and said, hey, we need to have a very important conversation. And then she called me to task about something that I know I have done. Mm -hmm. I know that I have. I mean, the last thing I would do is to say, you're just an asshole like your daddy. Like, oh like, how unconscious and awful do you have to be as a person to put that on your kid? I know. And like, just because you can't just suck it up and take accountability and just say, I'm sorry. Like, that shit goes such a long way with your child. Like, as a parent, most kids, like, all they want is from their parent is just to be like, I'm so sorry I hurt you, but I love you so much and I just want us to be okay again. Mm -hmm. I just want us to try and rebuild, try to get close again because I care about you. Mm -hmm. That would go such a long way. Yes, and that is the bare minimum. That is the bare minimum. Yeah. And I love that Gabe was able to like put all of that into words and say that to his father. Like that takes some guts Mm -hmm. to say that. Like I can't even say that to my family. Well, where do we think that conversation took place? Because I was almost Mm -hmm. wondering whether that was the conversation that Gabe and Garrison had with him out on Coyote Pass when he got mad at them. Remember, they were trying to talk to him during the time of COVID. I don't know. And he was getting a bit upset with them. And he did, I think, if I recall correctly, talk a little bit of shit about Janelle in that conversation. Maybe. Or maybe it was another conversation after because Cody says that conversation never happened. Right. So if it was the one on Coyote Pass, I mean, we have film that it did happen. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was another one after that. And Cody's trying to get us to not believe Gabe. Right which is so crazy. Yeah, we're never going to do that. We're going to believe Gabe. 100%. Now, Gabe also talks about Robin because I think Janelle brings up the fact that, you know, Robin, one of her chief complaints is the fact that we never treated them like they were part of our family and that we treated the kids bad. And Janelle asks Gabe, like, did we do that? Like, I don't remember that at all. And this is where Gabe says, and I just love how he said this. He's like, no, I mean, Robin has a complete and total victim complex. And I totally get it because some people employ different, people employ different strategies in order to live their lives. Yeah. They've got to do these things. And so maybe that's her strategy, but it doesn't make it right. She's playing the victim. And if she thinks that we weren't out here trying to get along with her kids, if she thinks we weren't trying to get along with her, then like there is no hope whatsoever for us to ever have a relationship. If that is how, if that is her perspective of what we were doing as a family. Right. Because according to Gabe, he was trying hard. Yeah. He was trying hard and he also really loved her kids. Yeah, he talked about how he was best friends with one of the girls in middle school and how he he would talk to Dayton or try to hang out with him in high school. Like, he was really close. And people on Reddit have been posting, like, all of the screenshots and clips from all these prior seasons of, like, all the kids hanging out and all of them having fun together. And, like, Robin's Mm -hmm. kids were getting along really great with all of the others. So it's all a bunch of bullshit. It is. If Robin genuinely thinks that, then she's just as insane as Cody. Mm -hmm. And then that just proves that you guys just wanted to be together and alone Mm -hmm. this whole entire time with your own little surrogate family and fuck the rest. And this is where he actually talks about COVID and how uh, how Cody used COVID and the time of COVID to kind of position himself to be able to stay with Robin all the time. And I think, I don't remember quite how Gabe says it, but something like, well, I think he did really take care of his family, the family that he loved. Yeah. The rest of the family, though, that we didn't get any of that. Yep. Exactly. And then we also hear from Janelle about how Cody only sees Savannah like once every yes. couple months. But Savannah's just resigned to it. She just accepts it because she's got her brothers mm-hmm. and they'll take care of her and they'll walk her down the aisle. She right. doesn't need her dad. 
And I felt bad for Savannah. I know she's saying that, but that's sad. It's very sad. And I guess in the recent interviews that Janelle and Christine have been giving, um, Janelle has actually said that Cody has not seen Savannah at all in 2024. Wow. We're in October of 2024, and he has not seen Savannah. That little angel, that cherub, that sweet, docile young lady, he has not seen her all year that's so horrible i hate him so much i hate him so i hate him so much much and if i have to hear him say one more fucking time that he came close to death he saw the grim reaper during covid and that's why he couldn't see his family for an entire year or whatever the fuck i'm Mm. No, because that happened at Gabe's birthday. That was in October of 2020. He had been doing this for six months and seven months by then. Yeah. So he had already been neglecting them for a really long time. And plus he called Gabe Mm -hmm. when he had COVID on Gabe's birthday, had no idea it was Gabe's birthday and just talked about himself the entire time. So insane. Yes. It's so crazy. And like Janelle even talks about it in a scene like Cody was a great dad. And we saw this in some of the flashbacks. Like this bothers me about Janelle. He was Janelle. such a good dad. Well, but he was a good dad, though, right? Like when they were younger, he was present. He was there, and then now, he doesn't care. I guess, but I mean, I think Janelle defends him a little too much. Mm. I think what it was, and actually, who was I watching? I think I was watching Red Lipstick Reality TV. By the way, on YouTube, you should also follow She's her. Great. She's fantastic. She was talking about. Janelle's general apathy and Mm. how Janelle was apathetic in the marriage with the romance. She didn't miss the intimacy because she didn't care about the intimacy. Mm -hmm. The Mm -hmm. only time she made a move was when it became noticeable to her that Cody was actually a piece of shit father and treating her children bad. And so that was the impetus for her to leave the relationship. Mm -hmm. But because she's so fucking apathetic, I wouldn't doubt at all that it was happening for quite some time before that. And we know when they were in Vegas in the cul-de-sac, he was already fucking with the schedule. He was not hanging out with Janelle. He was not with Christine as much as he should have been. He was right. at Robin's. She had the office. She He parked his car there and that's where he was. So it was happening then too. Yeah. And she didn't change anything then because it didn't bother her. Right. It didn't bother her until her son started getting really, really upset. Garrison mm-hmm. and Gabriel. Why do you think she was so ap- apathetic then? Why does she defend him? Because I think that um, it worked. I mm. think for her, like... It worked. They were able to get homes. They were able to get land. They were able to feed their kids. They were able to keep this family together. It was working. Was it perfect? It was not. Did she have a romantic husband? She did not, but she didn't need it because it worked. And so Mm -hmm. I think that she had a hierarchy of needs, which is probably different from Christine's, different than Robin's. And so she was able to stay in it for longer. But like she she literally shouldn't have. Yeah. She for should sure. have saved her kids well beyond, well before it started getting acute for them. Well before Garrison and Gabriel are confronting Cody on Coyote Pass. You should have been outie. Yeah. That's I'm true. I'm pissed at Janelle for that. So do you think Cody's true in saying that Janelle was a relationship coward? Do you think it's Ooh. like the apathy is cowardice? I don't think it's cowardice. But I think that it's ruinous. Mm. I think that she contributed to the shit that happened to Mm. her own kids. Like 100%. Like complicit. Yes, she was complicit because she allowed Cody to do the shit that he was doing. And we're pretending he was a great father. I mean, yeah. I mean, he was a Disney dad, which I think Christine has actually called him. He's a Disney dad. He's there for the fun shit. But was he there for the hard shit? I don't Mm -hmm. know. I don't know that Sister Wives, the franchise, has established that he was a good dad in that way. Yeah, and I mean, even Janelle says that to Gabe in this scene where he's like are you happy mom like how are you doing and she's like yeah like I'm good and you know I am glad that I finally left but I stayed so long because of you kids like you guys were still at home and that's like the worst kind of mentality Mm -hmm. like why stay in such a shitty marriage in such a terrible situation just because your kids are not old enough to move out of the house you where know? there's abuse happening. Right. Like, I mean, Janelle at this time in fucking Las Vegas sees that Mary gets no time with Cody. Right. She doesn't advocate for Mary. Mm-mm, like, not at all. Like to keep your family together. She knows because she's reading the book. She's looking at the book. She's handling the money. She's doing the taxes, I think. Mm-hmm. She knows there's financial abuse that's taking place, right? Yeah. She said last season or the season before, like, I see where the money goes. Like, you don't need to be paying for all of that while I'm in an RV, bitch. Right. 
but she's allowing for all of that to take place. But because she's apathetic and it works for her, like she's like, oh, I'll just stay here. It's fine. Yikes. Yeah. I don't have I don't have any respect for that. I don't either. I mean, all of these women stayed way too fucking long. Well, and her children have deep wounds as a result of this. Yeah. Maddie is a wounded girl. All of them are. Maddie has lost her father in like a spectacular, terrible way. Yep. They all have. Gabriel's wounded. The only yep. reason he's not like more wounded in his day-to-day life is because he's getting therapy. Yep. And he even says like, we all need therapy. Everybody in this family needs therapy. And Janelle's like, you're right. Well, Janelle, are you getting it? Yeah. No, she's not. Is Mary getting it? Is Christine getting it? Mm-mm. Who's getting therapy? Because you do all need it. They all need it. God. And then what else did Gabe say? He said, oh, he talked about like the only way that family could heal would be if Cody took accountability, but that would take an act of God, mm-hmm. which kind of just proves all of our theories that like Cody's never going to get better. Mm-hmm. He's never going to change. I wish he would. I thought after Garrison, maybe he would. But if that scene from last week, that fake staged fight was filmed after Garrison's passing, then there's literally no hope for these two. It doesn't even have to be that, Beatrice. The fact that he hasn't reached out to Savannah well, all of 2024 yeah. after she lost her brother and right. after Garrison was so lonely needing her, needing his father. So he knows this about his son and <sighs> what happened to Garrison and he's still not reaching out to Savannah, the most innocent of them all. Right. Are, do you think they're going to have some like performative sob story at the end of the season when we finally catch up like do you think we're gonna see any kind of real emotion from them i don't i don't know i I don't know i just don't understand how you could be like that as a person Mm -hmm. but i guess i'm not a piece of shit so no that's why yeah (laughs) i cannot relate god and then what else was there anything else from janelle and gabe not really just my overall observation that gabe has been dealt a really shitty hand but he's handling it like a g like he's handling it so well he like remember christine said more kids should be like mckelty trying to you know ask for what they need that is such bullshit Mm -hmm. you don't even mean that christine yep more kids the kids should be more like gabe oh yeah like and it is sad that he has this resignation and an acceptance of the fact that he's probably never going to see his dad again i know he's never going to have a relationship with robin and her kids again and you know what he's okay with that yeah, and like I know he's okay with it. I know he's saying he's okay with it, but that's like such a deep wound. Mm-hmm. Like as somebody who doesn't really have like the best relationships with my parents, and that's all I want in my life. Mm. Like that's such a painful thing. Even if you do accept it, it, still fucking sucks. Yeah, still really sucks. So I feel for Gabe, but I'm really glad he's in therapy. Well, let's go uncensored. Okay, if you wouldn't mind. Come back from uncensored. We're talking about. Gabe and Mm -hmm. how Gabe is younger than you, but he's gotten therapy and he's in such a great place. He's so much better off. (laughs) Yeah. Like like dealing with this shit show of Mm -hmm. a family and this breakup of a family. And I think he even mentions it at the end of their scene. Like to have your family break up in such a catastrophic way, like, of course I need therapy. Of course I need to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad he's getting the help he needs and he's obviously handling it pretty well by the way if you want to be privy to our uncensored bits all you have to do is go to reality tv it was patreon.com slash <laughs> reality tv cringe um we share it all in video form and um it's only for the patrons yeah but i was telling her earlier tonight um there's this song by nine inch nails called only and there's a line that trent um sings which is i just made you up to hurt myself mm. and that always st- stuck with me because I was involved with like terrible despicable people and romantic relationships and I I noticed myself being in relationship with a person that I envisioned them to be in my mind Mm. or like who I really wanted them to be in my mind but not the actual person who was right in front of me and the fact that I kept doing that over and over it's like I'm just making this person up to hurt myself Mm. and so Gabe seems to have moved beyond that no longer like needing to make up this version of Cody as being this awesome father who's always loved them and love should be multiplied and not divided no he's seeing his dad for who he is so he doesn't have to continue to hurt himself by wanting a different person to show up who's never going to show up oh I'm glad that he learned that it's a hard lesson it is a really it is a hard hard lesson lesson to learn oh it's so hard let's get to mary now because mary yeah. got her spiritual release, her release baby. And i'm so happy for her i think this is great although i think it's a little silly oh okay why like because you're you've been legally divorced for so long you know no, what i mean but that's it's different like, from spiritual her spiritual divorce which is very meaningful to her and it's kind of interesting to me that 
Mary is the last one who has any faith I know. in this entire family. Yeah. And that shows her loyalty, though. It does show her loyalty, mm, doesn't it? Yes. But I thought it was crazy that she went to the church leaders and asked for a release. She wanted Cody to be involved. She gave him the opportunity. And he just ignored her. Yep. He didn't even respond. Bond. no effort whatsoever and so i'm glad the church leaders like didn't give her any fight with it they just mm -hmm. granted her the release on the grounds of abandonment mm -hmm. they called cody's bitch ass up mm -hmm. to tell him yeah you abandoned your yep. wife and probably some other shit that sure. cody won't say yeah he will not disclose because he didn't like what he heard yeah he didn't approve of it it's a man telling him uh-huh it's a man telling him who he is and what he's done and he can't take it uh, and even mary says Cody doesn't like the word abandonment because mm -hmm. he doesn't think that he abandoned Mary, which is cuckoo. It's cuckoo. And Mary then says, I feel that he did abandon me. Because he did. Yeah, absolutely. He emotionally ghosted you. Yeah. Yes. So I'm glad she got the release. Mm -hmm. I just think it's like kind of silly and crazy that she's the only one with faith left. Like nobody else gives a shit about their faith. No. And I was surprised to hear from Christine. She's just like, yeah, I didn't ask the church leaders for a release because I don't respect them. They have no power over me and I'm not a part of the faith. I'm like, whoa. Wow. That's an emotional reaction Work. to a faith that you absolutely grew up in. And indoctrinated indoctrinated. People. Like you were the princess of the AUB. Yeah. I would like to hear more about this. Yeah. Like this is the kind of shit that I would like to hear instead of shit about McKelty's placenta. Oh my, for like real. talk about your disentangling yourself from the AUB, which your whole family is a part of. Yeah. That's fascinating to me. Yeah. Even Janelle was saying it. Like she's like, I we don't we're not involved with any of the church leaders. We're not involved with the church anymore. So like I don't feel the need to get a spiritual release. And so I'm like, okay. Does that mean you're also abandoning the faith? She's not really saying it like that. No, because that. she's been talking about how she still has her faith yeah. in the other episodes. Like she still believes maybe she's gone from FLDS to LDS or from out of AUB hmm. into regular LDS. I don't know. Girl, I don't know. It's too many sex to remember. Irrespective, both Christine and Janelle are, they seem to be genuinely happy for Mary. That yeah. Mary got the release because that's what Mary wanted and good for Mary, you got what you wanted. It's awesome. And then we pan to robin yeah sitting on the couch crying about how she always envisioned cody and her and mary with a sense of destiny just like mary they would have a future together <laughs> and like how heartbreaking it is okay as if we feel sorry and then cody also saying that he was waiting on god because mm -hmm. robin told him to right and it took him so long to realize that he didn't want to be with Mary anymore. And he's sorry for that. But he's not saying that he abandoned her. He's saying he's actually blaming Robin mm -hmm. because Robin gave him the advice to wait on God. Right. For his marriage but with Mary. But then he says, I actually waited because I was afraid of what Mary was going to do. <laughs> because when you get divorced, it trashes your reputation. And Mary is not loyal. Never loyal. Has never been loyal. Which is the craziest Has fucking thing. Has never been loyal loyal and it's so crazy she I, was literally the last one uh uh yeah like, what she was sitting there when christine was saying i'm gonna leave the family with a stony stony face like a bitch face she walked out with cody and robin mm -hmm. she's been there for you 100 she's defended you she hasn't called you out on your bullshit and she could uh, she's got 32 years of all of your secrets and all mm -hmm. of this bullshit she was the first wife she knows the person that you are. She knows where those bodies are buried. And that's kind of the question I had, Beatrice. I go, mm -hmm. well, what are you afraid of Mary saying then? What does that mean? That he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> what does she know that you do not want us to know? I don't what know. do you not want Mary to say? Oh my God, I just want her to say it. <laughs> she's never going to say it. I know. Let she's, it go. Oh, she says it in this episode. Like, I don't want to be the bitter wife. And I'm like, why not? Please be the bitter Please. wife. Write a book. I <laughs> I've had it on the vision board this yeah. whole entire time of like Mary writing this amazing yeah. tell-all book. I mean, come on, Mary, if you're listening, you would make so much fucking money. Well, she's money. certainly dangling the carrot. Yeah, but like she's you'd make going so to. much more money. Yeah, I just don't hold your breath. 
I know. Okay. But it would just be so good. Last but not least, let's get to Robin, Zanny brained, crying on the bathroom floor At with her one ugly in the morning. Sink. Her ugly sink, which is carved out of rock. It's horrible. They're the gaudiest people I've ever seen, ever. But it's so fancy. That sink probably costs like two grand. I know, but it's ugly. It's horrible. That's new money for you. It's like I know. so bad. Yeah. It's super classe. ugly. Day classe. She's crying because uh, when she was growing up, she got her testimony of plural marriage and this was her <laughs> destiny to live out this life and now she's just got to accept that it's never going to happen and that she will never have the perfect family the perfect christmases that's all she cares about. that's all she cares about that's literally all she cares about is mm-hmm. the holiday yeah her dickensian village on display <laughs> her big fucking christmas tree mm-hmm. and having people over so that she can be the belle of the ball the favorite wife conducting this the the ceremony and then everybody gets to leave go back to their hovels and she siphons away all their money with her husband cares about christmas yeah that's it just the image it makes me wish unspeakable things (laughs) because it's just like you don't deserve that after how you contributed to the breakup of this family like you don't deserve to have all of this like celebration and this big fucking family fuck you Mm -hmm. if you actually cared Mm -hmm. you would have made the effort with everybody right you turned everyone against each other you turned cody against all of his wives and let him do that like even if you didn't have a hand in in that like let's say we believe you that you have been trying to get Cody to have relationships with his kids and have relationships with his wives. You still let him do all of this. You still let him break up the entire family. He's the one that destroyed your dream. Mm -hmm. He's the one that destroyed your perfect Christmases. Not anybody else. And not just Cody that she turned. She turned her own kids. Right. Who had actual relationships with the other kids. She turned them against the family as well. And now you're going to sit in your big McMansion and you can cry all you want. But she's going to make it sweet for her kids because she loves her kids and she's going to have to do it. Whatever. And then Christine talks about how we need to have new family traditions. And yes, our Christmases were awesome. There was a lot of love, but we need to forge new traditions. Um, And it's going to look a little different, but it's going to be beautiful. I liked that. I did as well. I thought that was sweet. Mm -hmm. And that is a good way to kind of put this. Like you can make new memories that are good and that's great. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's just how life is. It changes. Yes. But Robin, I don't believe you. I don't believe her either. I don't care that you're crying. This is a performance. This is so dumb. And you're high on Xanax. I wish you'd give me some. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on. Just the way she was talking. I know. Super weird. I didn't weird. know if maybe Cody was sleeping in the room right next to her. But her the set of her jaw was a little strange. Maybe. Her frown was really exacerbated. And was like, oh, girl, yeah. pull the phone away. I know. Such a boomer angle. I know. We don't need to see up your nose to your one brain cell. No. Dabby was on full display. Yes. Dabby was making an appearance. <laughs> oh, my God. Only patrons know that reference. I know. <laughs> yeah i just i don't know i i don't feel bad for her i think maybe she did film this because she was having some like late night anxiety of mm-hmm. like her reputation like how am i going to be perceived like what else can i film what else can i put in the show mm-hmm. to make people have sympathy for me let me go cry in my closet on christmas eve at the end of the day though what i think production needs to hear from me is like i don't care <laughs> I don't care to see this. I don't yeah, care about real. her fake crying, yeah. trying to manifest fucking wetness out of her eyes. I don't care about her sob story. I don't believe any of it. They're just lying. They're really wasting our time. Show us things that are more interesting. Like I said, the AUB, the disentanglement, yep. the release. All of this is way more interesting than Robin crying on the floor in her bathroom with her big stone sink. I know, for real. But we end the episode with that. We do. It's the cherry on top of the shit Sunday. Mm-hmm. Robin Brown crying it's like how many times do we have to see this woman cry i don't know it's or wild. fake cry yeah fake cry and then there's cody saying i wish she would just let it go and accept it as i have i've accepted that this is what we've got we've got a monogamous relationship and the only thing i pray for is for me and robin oh that was wild right that i pray the most for my marriage with robin to right. succeed it's like okay so then again you only care <laughs> about robin mm-hmm. and her break dance and pussy yep. we get it yep oh so frustrating then we have the preview we have mary saying she's not going to spend christmas with cody and robin duh <laughs> we have christine telling her kids that she loves steven and, she loves him so much. <laughs> and then we have mary and cody having an argument about 
him wishing he never married her. Right. Which I can't wait to see. Right. But we're probably going to see that in like three weeks. Yeah, I think that's the conversation where he's talking about like the real mistake is marrying somebody I didn't love. Crazy. And she's like getting mad. Yeah. In that scene. And I hope she says something. Please. I hope she talks back. I hope she fights with him. But he looks she like won't. such a miserable cunt. Oh, I know. It's <laughs> really fucking awful. He is really fucking I terrible. hate him so much. Me too. Well, is there anything else that we have to say before I lose my voice? Yeah. So is there anything else that we have to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well. If you love our podcast, you better be going to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star five. review. It really helps us grow the pod so more people can join the dumpster. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. We will be back later this week. We are doubling up on Mom Talk yes. on the secret lives of Mormon wives. So mm-hmm. make sure to come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>